All right, guys, so moving into the Warhammer trees, what we're focusing on here obviously is crowd control, crowd control, crowd control, as well as any other passives that are just going to help our crowd control or help us deal extra damage or anything like that. And the Warhammer has so many goodies in these passives that you just can't pass up, guys. So we're going to go ahead and start on the Juggernaut tree. So the first passive we take is Hammer Time, gain in power on heavy attack, increasing attack damage by 20% for four seconds. Usually I do run heavy attacks just because they're easy to get off when you hit one of your cc abilities so for instance if you start off with this shockwave ability uh, which we'll get to in a second but basically what it does is it stuns your opponent then you can pretty much follow up with a free heavy attack so once you get the heavy attack off then you can follow up with another crowd control ability that pretty much gets you another free heavy attack and then you're making use of this hammer time that gives you that extra damage now the hardened still passive adds grit to hammer heavy attacks and grants a 20 percent damage reduction while the heavy attack grit is active grit is an added stagger resistance that stops attacks from being interrupted by reactions. It sounds better than, you know, um, than this armor penetration on standard attacks because usually I'm not doing standard attacks. I'm usually doing heavy attacks when I'm using my hammer. So this made the most sense to me. For my first ability, I went ahead and went with Wrecking Ball. Strike the ground around the target with hammer, dealing 120% weapon damage and flattening enemy. So uh, obviously this is pretty good. It is a little bit hard to hit sometimes because you have to really aim it right and they can just roll out of it. And you know, it, it's kind of telegraphed. So they can dodge it, but you can kind of change your direction at the last, very last minute and still hit it. So the combat system is very nice in that manner. For the first passive on the Wrecking Ball Tree, we take safety measures, which is on a successful hit, player obtains Fortify, granting 20% damage resistance for four seconds. You have a few different abilities that can grant Fortify from the Warhammer Tree, and Wrecking Ball is one of them. So obviously that's pretty huge being able to just have that buff on you then you can switch over into your staff and then you have that 10 percent healing buff and you can also stack all of the other ways you can gain fortify to make yourself way tankier than not having those fortifies on you so that's one of the reasons why i went ahead and chose orbit protection too because we have all these ways to get fortified we're always going to be fortified and the last passive in the wrecking ball tree is breathing room all targets within 1.5 meters of target hit are also flattened. So this is pretty huge. You have a bunch of creatures running up on you. Maybe you aggroed a bunch of them. Bam, you can hit Wrecking Ball. They're all flattened. You can run away. You can use one of your other crowd control abilities to get them off of you, like what we'll get to on the Crowd Crusher tree. You have so many options here, and uh, it's just a great CC option here on the Juggernaut tree. I did have Mighty Gavel at one point, but this doesn't do any CC. It doesn't crush them down like the Wrecking Ball does. And I also did have Armor Breaker at one point, but yes, Armor Breaker does deal a nice bit of damage, but it it doesn't provide any CC. As a primary healer, we want that CC for whenever somebody runs up on us, we'll be able to lay the smack down and get them the hell out of our face or just charge them up and be like, what's up, bro? <laughs> you could just be like, what's up, bro? Like you can't do anything to me, you know? For these other passives here, I went ahead and went with exhaustive attacks. All Warhammer abilities apply exhaust, slowing targets, stamina regeneration by 15% for five seconds. This is pretty huge when we start to look at the Crowd Crusher tree. Because we have so much CC going on with this build, whenever somebody gets CC'd, what's the first thing they're trying to do when they're stunned, when they can't move? You know, they're tapping that dodge, they're tapping the dodge, tapping the dodge, tapping the dodge. They might even mistakenly over dodge and use a lot of their stamina. So when they do that, you know their stamina regeneration is debuffed. So it's harder for them to continue to keep up that pace and it enables you to further capitalize on their immobility. Next, we have Contemption. On targets under 30% HP, 
increased damage done by heavy attacks by 15%. So this is a nice little added damage. You're able to close out on a creature that's really annoying. He has low health. You hit him with a heavy attack and he still has that last little bit of health. This helps close that out. And this can also help just seal the deal on those pesky little creatures. Or even if you're in PVP on those pesky little guys that can get off a little bit of healing to stay alive and they have a little sliver of health and they stay alive, this can get that job done. And then last but not least on the juggernaut tree, we have the power through pain passive for one second after taking damage, deal 35% extra damage. So even if we aren't always able to take advantage of this, this can be a nice little damage buff. Uh, especially if they're low on health, we're dealing 35% extra damage as well as another 15% extra damage on the heavy attack. This can be really huge if we're able to get off that heavy attack, but if not, it still can be pretty huge if we're able to land it. Now on the crowd crusher tree, first off, we have clear out this, in my opinion, as a primary healer, this is a must have. If somebody is uh, coming up on you or you have a group of people coming up on you you can quickly just hit one of your cc abilities and then hit clear out and just run away and with the passes that we're going to talk about in this tree it makes clear out uh, that much stronger so clear out is a must have if you're going to be running this build the first passive that we're going to take on clear out is power cleaner hitting a target with clear out grants fortify providing a 10 percent defense bonus for four seconds to all friendlies within six meters moving further down clear out's tree we have clean and refreshed clear outs cooldown is reduced by five seconds per enemy hit with the ability pretty self-explanatory the more people you hit the faster you can use clear out again and the last passive that we have on the clear out tree is swing away which is my favorite using clear out on a target grants haste increasing movement speed by 30 percent for three seconds now 30 percent is quite a bit honestly and when we group that with another passive that we'll see in a second this makes clear out really really strong so let's say we hit clear out and we want to close the gap between us and you know the creature or the player that we hit with the clear out this enables us to do that more effectively and enables us to chain attacks enables us to maybe even get off a heavy attack without them getting out of the way or without them getting up in time um, so th there are a lot of things we can do with this haste now uh, before we get to the other uh, passes and the last active ability I want to talk about the ultimate ability here on the crown crusher tree which is aftershock whenever a target is affected by a crowd control effect they're slowed by 20 percent for four seconds so I mean guys this is this is huge and I can't wait to get all the way down this tree because this just makes you a beast man I mean uh, if you're the one doing the hunting, you're going to hunt, you know, uh, they're slowed. You have haste, you have all the CC, and then you pair that with the healing that you're getting from the life staff with all the passives that you already have, all the fortifies that you have, all the extra buffed healing that you have. Guys, you can see how this build is absolutely unstoppable, absolutely unstoppable. So let's go ahead and get into the last active ability tree. We have Shockwave, slam the hammer into the ground, causing a three meter radius AOE earthquake that deals 80% weapon damage, apply stun to all impacted targets for two seconds. And then if you have a gem, this also can grant taunt. So obviously as a healer, you're not really looking to taunt anybody. This is more so if you're running Warhammer as your main weapon then maybe you would go for the taunt gem and that could work out for you but in this build uh, we're not worried about that now on the first passive of the shockwave tree we have frailty the trauma of the attack causes weaken decreasing the damage dealt from the target's attacks by 10 percent for 10 seconds so 10 seconds is a pretty long time this is probably what you want to open up with i recently have been opening up with uh with wrecking ball but I think I need to get in the habit of opening up with Shockwave because sometimes Wrecking Ball just won't hit, especially if you have somebody that has a shield. That shield will actually block Wrecking Ball and they won't flatten. So from what I've seen, Shockwave hits every single time. I, I don't think I've seen Shockwave not hit. It's really rare when Shockwave doesn't hit. I think Shockwave hits pretty much every time. So I think Shockwave is really good to open up with. And then it also debuffs the enemy, which helps you make use of a passive in this crowd crusher tree that we'll talk about in a second and you just take less damage so it's just better and 
you also can get off that free heavy attack when you hit that stun with the shockwave or you can go ahead and guarantee that you get your clear out hit or guarantee that you get your wrecking ball hit which will also guarantee you another heavy attack or a flea or whatever you're trying to do in that situation. Meteoric Crater, this is the last passive on the shockwave tree, expands the effective range of the shockwave to a four meter radius. So it's just one more meter, it's not that much, but it can be a huge deal when we're talking a lot of different situations, you know? It just gives shockwave that much more utility. Now, for the last three passives here, we're gonna start with Facilitated Expedition. After hitting a target with an active debuff, obtain haste, increasing movement speed by 15% for three seconds. This again can be used to flee. It can be used like we were talking about before. You hit somebody with a stun, the first thing they're looking to do is to dodge out of it so it can help you close that gap. You could do a lot of things with this. You'll have a few seconds to stack it up with the clear out haste. Maybe you hit a shockwave for the debuff and then you hit clear out. You can close the gap between them or if they just have another debuff from another player or something like that and you hit that player then you get that haste so it's just nice to kind of have that movement speed increase in pretty much any game being fast is usually not a detriment to your gameplay it's usually always a benefit so uh it's, it's really nice to have that extra moving speed there now the last two passives concussive impact 15 percent damage against targets affected by warhammer debuffs that just makes opening up with shockwave make a lot more sense uh because you're going to be hitting them with that weakened debuff that lasts for 10 seconds and that gives you just that extra 15 percent damage along with all of the other extra damage that we can get from our other passives now prevailing spirit which is the last passive that we're going to take here regain 35 percent of damage damage dealt as health when using a crowd crusher ability this is actually one of the best passives on either tree you're regaining 35 percent of damage dealt as health so you're healing on each one of your active abilities that's pretty huge so now we're healing even when we have our warhammer we're literally healing even when we have our Warhammer. It just makes you that much more unstoppable, guys. I honestly shouldn't even be putting this build out there because I'm just going to be going ape shit once I start entering the PvP and all that. Guys, watch out. This build is sick, dangerous, nasty. You'll be able to just dick everyone down. Like I said, I'm not this far down the tree, but once I get there, oh my goodness. And obviously, I'll probably be playing with different passives here and there. You have this passive after two light attacks, you get to reduce the duration of a debuff on yourself. This one reduces cooldowns. I don't see them as that necessary just because usually you're probably going to be switching back into your life staff. So once you get back on the hammer, all your abilities are going to be back. So you're not really going to stay on the hammer for a long time unless you're dedicating yourself to doing damage like with a party or with a dungeon or something like that. But you're going to want to switch back to your life staff, throw the orb of protection back out again and you know do your healing things and then switch back into the hammer so i don't think it's necessary to really have any cooldown reduction on the hammer so we just kind of stay out of that so yeah guys that is pretty much it for this build i hope you guys got a lot of value out of this you know just going through and theorizing i hope you guys came up with some of your own ideas maybe you want to implement some of these passives that you probably haven't looked at just yet. If you got some value out of this video, go ahead and hit that like, hit that subscribe. It really helps me out. The channel's growing. I'm really happy about that. And I'm really enjoying just soaking everything in and just touching every aspect of this game and just taking my time with it as I can play it and just having a blast, guys. I hope you guys are all having a blast as well. Leave a comment down below if you're a healer or if you're a Warhammer user and let me know what you guys are building or what you guys think would be a nice addition to this build or a nice variation to this build. Keep those green lights on, guys, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.